You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Uh, what is happening in the NFL? I'm, some of you might be saying, really? Really? The NFL raises the issue? But no, what this really speaks to in terms of what's happening in the NFL, uh, at the end of the season, what always happens is coaches are fired. And that means that their coaches get replaced. Well, they got a serious problem in the NFL when Ron Rivera, uh, who is Latino, was fired by the Carolina Panthers, was then hired as the head coach of the Washington Redskins. You've got numerous African Americans uh, who are there, who are ready, but can't get a job. There are only three black head coaches in the NFL. Three. People have been highly critical of that. Eric Bieniemy, who was the top offensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs. No head coaching shot. Byron Leftwich, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, offensive coordinator. No shot whatsoever. Yet today, the New York Giants actually hired Joe Judge. Do you know what his title is? Wide receiver and special teams coach. Here's what black coaches are always told, that you need to be able to get to one of the top coordinator positions as offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. Then that was this period in the NFL where these owners were picking the offensive line coach for as the head coach. Mike Tice with the Vikings was one of those folks. Uh, I forgot the guy who was hired as the Oakland Raiders. Uh, again, the offensive line coach, he became the head coach. And so all of a sudden that became the hot deal. Folks, here's the reality in the NFL. This boils down to whiteness. Whiteness. This boils down to 32 owners. Only one of the NFL owners isn't white. That's the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. What you're dealing with here is a league that is majority African American, yet the owners are picking folks who they're comfortable with. Now, years ago, Johnny Cochran and others threatened to sue the NFL. That led to what is now called the Rooney Rule. The Rooney Rule stipulates that NFL teams will at least interview a minority candidate for top positions, such as head coach, team president, general manager. What the NFL teams have done, though, is make a mockery of the Rooney Rule. They've given these sham interviews no intent whatsoever to hire black coaches. And if you talk to these black coaches in the NFL, they will tell you these are sham interviews. They know these interviews will not lead to a job. Take the Dallas Cowboys. Interview, of course, uh, interview uh, uh, Marvin Lewis. They hired Mike McCarthy. You look at Carolina Panthers, zero in on Matt Rule. Coach Ed Baylor, give him a seven-year, $60 million contract he could earn with incentives up to $70 million. And then, of course, you have Joe Judge with the New York Giants. Only team left is the Cleveland Browns. The question is, who are they going to hire? The fact of the matter is this here. What people need to understand, okay, is that when people say the NFL, you have to understand how the NFL is set up. Roger Goodell is the commissioner of the NFL. Roger Goodell works for the owners. The 32 owners of the NFL, they control the NFL. They are the power brokers. Roger Goodell is an employee of them. He's there to represent their interest. Even when he takes action against an owner, it's pretty much the owners deciding amongst themselves how they're going to do this. Now, some of you might be watching. You might be saying, well, I don't understand, Roland, why, this, why you think this is a big deal. Because the issue with the NFL and the hiring of black coaches is no different than what we see happening in the front office. There's one black general manager in all of the NFL. There are no black team presidents in the NFL. The same thing applies to what is happening on the collegiate level. Largely white athletic directors and white presidents and white boosters eh, pretty much don't hire black head coaches. There are only a handful. You cannot use two hands to count the number 
of black coaches of major Division I programs in college. But I can extend this beyond the NFL and extend this beyond college. You take Major League Baseball. Take the NBA. Oh, some of y'all even look at me right now saying, really? The NBA? All the black players. But here's the deal. Show me how many head coaches in the NBA who are black didn't play. Take your time. It'll be a while. So there are numerous white coaches in the, NF, in the NBA who have never played the game. So essentially what they're saying is that in order for you to become a head coach in the NBA and you're black, you had to be a former player. That's pretty much what, what they're saying. But let me take this thing even further. Because what you're seeing with this notion of whiteness in the NFL can be applied to corporate America. It's applied to the folks who are on boards of directors. Do you realize that there are fewer black CEOs of Fortune 500 companies today in 2020 than there were 10 years ago? I've talked to African-American lawyers who have said there are fewer black law partners at major law firms in this country. I could go down the line. Why, why did we, National Association of Black Journalists, why were we so critical in going after, in going after CNN? Because to sit there and say you had no black executive producers, no black vice presidents, no black executive vice presidents, no black senior vice presidents, and no black direct reports, that is the exact same thing we're talking about in the NFL. What we have to understand is that even though this is 2020, and even though there are people who somehow believe that we had this big kumbaya with a black president, the reality is that whiteness is still a major issue in this country. Now, I'm sure there are people who are sitting here saying, oh, no, it's all about hiring the best person. Really? Really? New England Patriots, their wide receivers this year were trash. But the guy who was a wide receivers coach gets one of the plum NFL jobs, head coach of the New York Giants? R really? Really? What we have to understand is that what Frederick Douglass said. Frederick Douglass said, power concedes nothing without a demand. Never has, never will. He also said, agitate, agitate, agitate. Now, I love the people who say, oh, my goodness, you, you, you're a race baiter. The proof is in the pudding. How can Eric Bieniemy be the offensive coordinator of one of the most explosive offenses in the NFL and supposedly owners want offensive-minded coaches? Sean McVay was the head coach of Los Angeles Rams. Last year, led them to the Super Bowl. All of a sudden, the wonder kid. What about Bieniemy? What about Leftwich? Leslie Frazier, defensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills. I can go down the line. What we have to understand is that this and this is still a deterrent to success. We're often told that wait your turn, go through the process, do the right things and do this job and work your way up. So explain to me how is it that when we work our way up, we somehow don't get to the top floor. We're stuck on the middle of the lower floors. The reason we have to continue to call this thing out, because you heard what I said about Matt Rule. He signed a seven-year, $60 million contract. He could make $70 million. That's, folks, that's $10 million a year. How many black coaches will get that opportunity to be able to build that kind of generational wealth? That means that the family of Matt Rule, the family is set. Think about it. You could take, take 70 million bucks, fine, you could say taxes, your agent, everything like that. Let's say, okay, he clears half of that. That's $35 million over seven years. $5 million a year. 
his children's children will see the benefits of him getting that particular job. See, that's why I focus on this, because I think too often when we talk about these issues, we only look at just this singular job without realizing the economics behind that job, without realizing that what then happens if you're able to make $7 million a year? What are you able to fund? What are you able to give to? What are you able to contribute to? Whether it's the National Urban League or the NAACP or HBCUs or the Thurgood Marshall Fund or the college that you went to or the Boys and Girls Club or your church or whatever. The reason there is a wealth gap in America is not because of anything other than inheritance which means land, which means property, which means stocks, which means options, which means all of those things. The bottom line is this here. What the NFL is doing is simply what America has always done, and that is give black people, in this case specifically black men, short shrift. The question is, will you have white voices in sports? speak up. Will they challenge these owners? Or will the owners simply go hide and Roger Goodell is going to go cut another deal with a rapper to talk about the great things that they're doing? See, it's meaningless to me to go out and recruit Jay-Z for your social impact initiative, Inspire, or whatever it's called. When over here, black folks are being denied opportunities not just head coaches, we'll be denied opportunities for the upper tier jobs as well. Oh, we can be the running backs coach. We can be the defensive backs coach, the wide receiver coach. But see, once you start talking about offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, and then head coach, now you're in rarefied air. We have to think about this, and that's why we need external groups. That's why we need organizations externally. That's why we need civil rights organizations that actually are being led by folks who have troops, who have members, as opposed to singular personalities. What we need is, we need our organizations calling these folks out. And I dare say this, in the spirit of Johnny Cochran, I would hope that our prominent black lawyers will pick up where they left off and say, NFL, the Rooney Rule isn't working. So therefore, we're going to take you to court. We want to have depositions. We want to have discovery to understand what's going on. If you think the NFL is settled with Colin Kaepernick, imagine what could be uncovered. You started asking questions about whether or not black folks are getting true opportunities as head coaches, as general managers, and as team presidents. That, folks, is what is needed. And that's why we've got to stop running around wearing NFL jerseys and caps and gloves and hats and jackets and talking about our favorite team and realize that essentially what these owners are saying is I have no problem with y'all entertaining me. But if you think I'm going to hire you, you got another thing coming. All right, folks, back to our Roadblock Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, you've heard me talk a lot about MarijuanaStock.org. Why? Because I want to keep you informed of potential investment opportunities. We've all watched the growth of the cannabis industry. Of course, a recent report by New Frontier Data estimates the global cannabis market at more than $340 billion. Also, places like Illinois, where they simply just made it legal to purchase marijuana, you're seeing it expand across the nation. Now, marijuana has a good cousin, the hemp plant, with a much higher concentration of CBD. That means hemp gives you all the medical benefits of marijuana without getting you high. Hemp farming is now legal in the United States as a result of the 2018 Farm Bill, thus creating one of the largest commodities worldwide. It's very simple. They're going to need land to grow all the plants, and this is where the folks at 420 Real, 420 Real Estate come in. Uh, their business model is very simple. They buy land that supports hemp CBD grow operations and lease it to licensed high-paying tenants. 
That's right, they are hemp CBD landlords. And you can get in on the action uh, by going to marijuanastock.org. And that is, uh, you can have a minimal investment of 200 bucks uh, up to $10,000. Again, 200 bucks up to $10,000. To invest, go to marijuanastock.org. That's marijuanastock.org. Get in the game and get in the game now. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.